Mental training and visualization is a fascinating process that has been shown over and over again in now hundreds of studies to improve our ability to learn anything and to consolidate, that is to keep that information in mind and body so that you can perform those cognitive tasks, music tasks, motor tasks, etc., for long periods of time without ever forgetting how to do them. The ability to learn music, the ability to learn and perform mathematics, the ability to learn and perform motor skills in sport, in dance, across essentially all domains. So you'll soon see when you go into the literature, that is the scientific studies on mental training and visualization, you quickly realize that it does not take a lot of mental training and visualization in order to get better at anything. However, that mental training and visualization has to be performed in a very specific way. Neuroplasticity is our nervous system, which of course includes the brain, the spinal cord, and all the connections between the brain and spinal cord and the organs and tissues of the body, and then all the neural connections back from the organs and tissues of the body to the brain and spinal cord. So the whole thing in both directions has the ability to change in response to experience in ways that are adaptive. That is, that allows us to do things that we could not do before. And by doing those things, or by being able to perform those mental operations, we can do better in the world that we live in. We can perform new tasks, we can think new thoughts, we can come up with novel solutions to pre-existing problems that before really vexed us and that we couldn't overcome. All of that is considered neuroplasticity. Many people have heard, perhaps, that when you imagine something happening, that your brain doesn't know the difference between that imagination of the thing happening and the real thing happening. Turns out that is not true. It is simply not true. If you are going to use mental training and visualization to its best effect in order to engage neuroplasticity in learning, you need to keep those visual visualizations quite brief, really on the order of about 15 to 20 seconds or so, and pretty darn sparse, meaning not including a lot of elaborate visualization, not including a lot of sequences of motor steps. What I mean are motor sequences, if you're trying to learn something in terms of physical movement, or visual sequences or auditory sequences, if you're trying to learn things in terms of music or dance, etc., that can be completed and repeated in 15 seconds or less. If you want to use mental training and visualization, understand this is the key first principle. They have to be very short visualizations that you can repeat over and over and over again with a high degree of accuracy. Now, in order to develop the best mental training and visualization protocols for you, let's go a little bit deeper into what the research says about mental visualization. Put simply, when we imagine something in our mind's eye or mind's ear, we are imagining the real thing happening. And when I say the real thing, it's not the obvious real thing. Of course, if you're imagining something, that's the thing you're imagining. What I mean is that your brain at the level of neurons is behaving exactly the same way. So in telling you this, what I'm saying is that mental visualization at the neural level is identical to real world events. So when you've heard that when we imagine something, it's identical in terms of our brain's experience of it and our body's experience of it as when we actually experience something, that is true at the neural level. However, when it comes to learning and improving performance in the cognitive or physical domain, they are not equivalent. While yes, Mental training and visualization recaptures the same patterns of neural firing in the exact same ways as real world behavior and thinking. It is not as effective as real world behavior and thinking. In other words, if you want to learn something, the ideal situation is to combine real training in the physical world with mental training. If you're trying to get better at something that you've never performed before, you really should know that. The mental training and visualization is probably not the best augment to that real world training until you're able to perform it successfully in the real world at least some of the time. Mental training and visualization can be effective, however, at increasing the accuracy or the frequency at which you can do that real world behavior. So if normally you're only getting the correct swing or you're only hitting the the golf ball correctly, say 10% of the time, mental training and visualization can really help bring that number up. But it is important that you are able to successfully complete that motor task in the real world. One of the other key components of a successful mental training and visualization practice is how often you perform that mental training and visualization practice, anywhere from two to eight times per week. It does appear that performing these sessions anywhere from three to five times per week is going to be effective. We could perhaps even say most effective because most of the, uh, let's just call it the strongest data, really point to repeating these 50 to 75 trials of the same thing three to five times per week. So you can come up with a number that's reasonable for you to do consistently. And you might ask, do you have to continue to perform the mental training and visualization forever? And the good news is the answer to that question is no. It does seem that once you have what's called consistent 
consolidated the motor performance or the cognitive performance of something, it can be further supported or reinforced, that is consolidated in the neural circuits that are responsible for performing that mental or physical task. So in other words, once you are performing that cognitive or motor task in a way that's satisfactory or perhaps just improved, perhaps you're not 100%, but it's improved in the real world, you don't need to continue to do mental training and visualization to maintain that real world performance. So that's a good thing. In fact, the ideal situation would be then to pick a different sequence or thing that you're trying to learn and do mental training and visualization for that. If you are somebody that's interested in developing a mental training and visualization protocol, so if you're a coach or teacher or simply a learner, or you're trying to self-direct your own adaptive plasticity, I want to emphasize that the key components that we discussed today are essential to include, but I wouldn't obsess about whether or not a given epoch is 15 or 20 seconds or even 25 seconds. I wouldn't obsess over whether or not you got 30 repetitions in and then your mind drifted or whether or not you could do the full 50 to 75 or whether or not even in your mind's eye, you made some errors. What's been shown over and over again in this literature is that performing mental training and visualization repeatedly and in a very restricted way that makes it easier to perform those trials over and over and over again and with a high degree of accuracy, almost always, really, we can fairly say in essentially every study where it's been explored has led to improvements in real world performance of both cognitive and or physical tasks. Ladies and gentlemen, learning rapidly with less effort sounds like something out of science fiction or a dream, but in reality, it's something that is absolutely possible with the infinite power of our mind. You see, the same way that people relive traumatic events and have the PTSD from it or the anxiety or the depression is the same way that what when we can remember certain activities or things that we do, we can train our mind in order to go further in that direction and strengthen those neural pathways. So when people are stuck in their cycle of thinking of bad thoughts uh, and traumatic memories and triggering more anxiety and depression, their neural links and their neural pathways are becoming stronger and stronger with each thought. So using that, we can reverse engineer it and put it towards positive activities and positive goals that we have in our life. So if we want to learn how to learn how to play the piano or to do any sort of sports or as Andrew Huron mentioned, any motor skills or cognitive functions, what we can do is train our mind in the very simple points. So when we break down some sort of cognitive task like playing the piano or any sort of instrument. So for example, let's take piano. If we sit down and we're playing the song, we're playing the notes and all of a sudden we have the whole song figured out, but there's a certain section where we have a lot of trouble figuring out the transition of how our hands should go or if we have trouble reaching or if we just keep pressing the wrong note, but we know which one is the right one because we keep catching ourselves in the mistake. What we can do is we can then sit back down when we have an extra five minutes, five, 10 minutes and go over and actually visualize us playing the correct note 50 to 75 times. And like Andrew Huberman said, three to five times a week would be ideal until we have the problem and that error figured out. And then we can move on to the next one and the next one. So this is actually so incredibly powerful because we can avoid frustration. We can avoid burnout when we're practicing sorts of things and we can just let our mind relax and we can overcome any of our sticking points with the power of visualization. And the power of visualization has so many different elements to it. We can visualize our future goals and things just come and align themselves. So when you visualize certain lifestyle that you wanna have, you automatically program that into your subconscious mind so that every step you take during the day, you over time it builds up and you eventually get to your goals. This is so incredibly powerful. I have used it and it's been an absolute game changer for the last couple of years. You get to achieve your goals much quicker, achieve things without even knowing how you achieve them and to overcome sticking points without even having to put in that much effort other than mental exertion. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys got some value from it, 
please make sure to leave a like and subscribe and we will see you guys in the next video. And if you are interested in checking out our NoFab guide, there will be a link below in the comment section and in the top right hand corner of the video. So thank you so much and see you soon. Ready to conquer NoFap? Grab our digital NoFap guide now. End your porn addiction. Skyrocket your self-esteem and achieve your goals. Packed with proven techniques, expert advice, and relapse prevention tricks. Click the link below and break free today. <laughs>